Thus were their faces their wings stretched upward two wings of each one touched one another and two covered their bodies and each one went straight forward they went wherever the spirit wanted to go and they did not turn when they went see this shows that nothing can change the lord's plan wherever the spirit wanted to go they did not turn when they went god is working out his plans according to his will amen he doesn't change or waver that's what the meaning of those verses mean as for the likeness of the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals of fire like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures the fire was bright and out of the fire went lightning such an amazing vision the appearance of lamps the bible says god is light jesus said i am the light of the world and again in first john it says if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin see portraying about that unapproachable light or the glorious presence of god in heaven and the living creatures ran back and forth in appearance like a flash of lightning now as i looked at the living creatures behold a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces the appearance of the wheels and their workings was like the color of beryl and all four had the same likeness the appearance of their workings was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel you are seeing that uh, portrayal of that beryl colored wheel see have in mind that uh, multi dimensional concept which i mentioned in the intro you know the wheel in the middle of a wheel probably like a gyroscope these are all hyper dimensional objects the wheels which we are reading right now we uh, uh, we also uh, you know see this wheels on the throne of the ancient of days on the basis in solomon's temple on the chariot which is described in first chronicle chapter 28 amazing amazing when they moved they went toward any one of four directions they did not turn aside when they went turn not when they went they did not turn aside this shows that god is a god of purpose nothing in this uh, universe happens randomly there's nothing called as randomness or chance everything is orchestrated by god amen and god has a purpose for you and for me that's what jeremiah 29 verse 11 says god has a purpose for his children to do good to bless you amen as for their rims they were so high they were awesome and their rims were full of eyes all around the four of them full of eyes this is showing the omniscience of god the bible says in proverbs 15 verse 3 god is constantly working in the world god's glory his omniscience his power purpose for man are all evident in his created order when the living creatures went the wheels went beside them and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth the wheels were lifted up those wheels point to the continual activity of god he is always working he is even now working he is always presently active in the affairs of humanity wherever the spirit wanted to go they went because there the spirit went and the wheels were lifted together with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels interestingly these four living creatures guard the throne of god that's what we saw before you know that guarding the throne of god that's what we see in revelation chapter 4 that's why i showed that depiction in the camp of israel how all those are part of the divine design or how god has placed his design in scripture they guard the throne so that they do not allow the man 
in his sinful state to come into the presence of god they show the way that man is to come you know when in uh, genesis chapter 3 when god places the cherubim with the flaming sword uh, in such a way that man cannot enter and come and pluck the the fruit of the tree of life why did god allow that god wanted to make sure that if man had plucked that fruit while he was in the sinful state he can never be redeemed amazing right god wanted to save us god wanted to redeem us that's why for the sake of that redemption for redeeming us he ensured that man did not pluck from the pluck the fruit of the tree while he was in the sinful state when those went these went when those stood these two and when those were lifted up from the earth the wheels were lifted up together with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels the likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like the color of an awesome crystal stretched out over their heads firmament that is the word which we saw now the word for firmament in hebrew is rakia that is seen 17 times in scripture all those uh, words portray or that word means a beautiful raised area above the wheels and the cherubim having the throne of the living god it's a beautiful vision and under the firmament their wings spread out straight one toward another each one had two which covered one side and each one had two which covered the other side of the body god is still on the throne see this vision should give us the understanding that god is still on the throne working out his plan whether we see or not see this is the vision that the prophet saw god is working out his plan for his children whether we see or not the complex movements of those wheels and the cherubim show the perfect harmony and that order of god working out his plan in this universe praise god let's continue when they went i heard the noise of their wings like the noise of many waters like the voice of the almighty a tumult like the noise of an army and when they stood still they let down their wings the voice of the almighty this is echoed in psalm 29 and in revelation chapter 10 verses 3 and 4 where it talks about the seven thunders when john was going to write you know he was given the instruction don't write we see all these echoings throughout scripture the various sounds which we see you know that sound like the noise of many waters seen in psalm 42 and isaiah 17 like the thunder of the almighty the voice of god seven times in psalm 29 and that word almighty the word for almighty is the name shaddai which is used along with el standing for god so that's how we get el shaddai so it's such a mighty sound such a loud sound louder than many waters the thunder of the almighty a voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads whenever they stood they let down their wings and above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone on the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it sapphire stone you know this is similar to the marble stone or a azure stone and that throne can be somewhat visualized like uh, what you are seeing right now that glorious beautiful throne of god and we read now the appearance of a man interesting john writes the word became flesh and dwelt among us and in isaiah chapter 52 we read how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news who proclaims peace who brings glad tidings of good things who proclaims salvation who says to zion 
your God reigns. And that feet, when he was incarnate, that feet will be nailed to the cross when he came to the earth. Praise the Lord for the salvation that we have through Jesus. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward I saw, as it were, the color of amber, with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around. So it simply says, the, his upper and lower halves were covered by fiery bright brightness. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. You see, in the presence of the Almighty God, this prophet falls on his face. This is what we see throughout the Old Testament. When people encountered the presence of the Holy God, they fell down. And Isaiah says, Voice me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Daniel also adopts this position and he falls on his face. And this is the same position which John takes on the island of Patmos when he sees the Lord's presence. And though Ezekiel falls down, we see God setting him up on his feet. He calls him to be a watchman, fed him with the word, fills him with the spirit of God and sends him out on his mission. Praise the Lord. And what was the impact of that vision? God gave Ezekiel a message at Tel Abib. He transported him from his home in the exile to the entrance of the inner court of the temple in Jerusalem and departed from the cherubim in the temple to the edge of the temple moved from the edge to the eastern gate of the temple's outer court and that glory you now that glory went from the midst of the city to the mount of olives on the east side of the city and again returns to fill that new temple the glory comes back to that new restored temple and cleanses the people hallelujah so ezekiel is given a an overview or Ezekiel is introduced to that chariot of God or to the presence of God. He sees that vision of the Almighty God and the cherubim. And as today's session is coming to a close now, I would want you to reread this chapter and with these insights, ask God to speak to you even more. And for the next session, please read chapter 2 where interesting things await us. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel also as we study or we go through this book, amazing book. Amen. Can we pray? Father, help us to understand your word as your spirit gives us the understanding to understand and not only understand, help us to abide by your word and help us to be prepared for your coming Lord. Bless all my hearers. I thank you, Father. Encourage them and bless them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen.